Glover Teixeira's win over Jan Blahovic this past Saturday um, to win the UFC light heavyweight title, the championship, is a testament to perseverance and dedication to a vision and not giving up, despite all the odds being against him. Glover Teixeira went in there at 42 years of age in the week of his birthday to defeat Jan Blahovic. Um, you know, he wasn't expected to win. Yes, of course, he did have a chance. But Jan, riding the wave that he was on, was the clear favorite. The Polish power he was expected to use to knock Glover to share out. You know, he put it on display in the second round. He had a couple of good combinations and flurries in the first couple of minutes, but ultimately succumbed to a rear naked choke at 3.02 of the second round. Now, what caught me and many people by surprise was the relative ease with which Glover Teixeira defeated Jan Blachowicz. Now, Glover Teixeira, he's no slouch, but at 42 years of age, this was considered his last opportunity to ever fight for a UFC title. He did so about six years ago. Of course, he failed, but he never gave up. He kept going at it. He kept grinding. He kept getting the wins he needed to get, and eventually he had another shot. Maybe Jan Blachowicz was overlooking him. I don't know, but, you know, Jan Blachowicz, uh, is was 38 at the time of the fight a few days ago and is about to be 39. So it's not exactly like he's a young spring chicken of a fighter himself. You know, he's only about three years younger than Glover Teixeira. And um, which is interesting because the narrative is that Glover Teixeira is an old man and Jan Blachowicz was a younger fighter. Well, he's younger by three years, but he's uh, 39. Glover Teixeira is 42. So yeah, in the fight game, that's old. But that aside, what caught me by surprise was, like I said, the relative ease with which he defeated him. Now, he took, Teixeira took Jan Blahovich down in the first round uh, almost immediately and was on top of him and just dominated the first round with ease. And, you know, it didn't look like uh, Blahovich was even doing much off his back. Probably couldn't. He was just busy trying not to get beat up. And in the second round, you know, he was doing better with his boxing, better with his combination, putting some jabs out there, throwing some power combos out there to keep Glover at bay. And, you know, it was working initially, but Glover was pressing the action, pressing and getting him to back up. At one point, Jan was able to get some underhooks and put Glover against the fence, but he didn't really do anything with that. Uh, Glover eventually hurt him with the left hook and, uh, you know, as we know, took him down with a single leg. And this is what surprised me, was that as soon, almost as soon as Glover took uh, Jan Blahovic down, Jan turned and gave him his back. Like almost immediately once Glover got the full mount. I thought that was interesting. After about two hits, Glover, uh, it didn't even look like he sunk the rear naked choke. You know, it, it was about two seconds, uh, literally two seconds after clasping his hands, uh, Jan was tapping. It looked like a very, very quick tap. I'm not trying to put any conspiracy theories out there, but even the commentators, even uh, Anik and uh, and uh, Felder and uh, uh, excuse me, DC were saying, look, that it didn't look like he sunk it. It looked like there were several comments about it looking like it was squeezing the jaw. One of them said, "Is there something wrong with uh, a previous problem with uh, Blahovich's jaw?" DC even asked in a post fight interview, "Did he sink it underneath your uh, your?" all the way underneath the chin, or was he squeezing your jaw? Uh, and I even ran it back several times. It looked like he was squeezing his jaw, and he tapped almost immediately. It was it was weird how quickly he tapped and um, how it didn't really look like it was sunk in there. I mean, I'll quote. It says, um, it didn't necessarily look like Glover was under the chin there. And one of the other commentators responded, not completely. And that's what it looked like. That's what was said more than once by the commentators. DC even direct, directly asked after the fight in the post-fight interview. But nonetheless, uh, Lahovic said, yeah, he was directly under the chin. Um, I don't know. He gave his backup rather quickly. He tapped out even more quickly. And uh, where does he go from here? Obviously, he's not going to quit. He's going to want to come back. He said he left the Polish power in the hotel room. What does that mean? Does that mean he was overlooking Glover? Glover, was he partying too hard? And then, no, he was throwing combos when he was on his feet in the second round. He was throwing combos, he even, uh, but he got outdone in even that department uh, because he was actually hit more flush and hurt by a right-hand left-hook combo and then subsequently taken down and submitted. 
Now, Glover Teixeira, he doesn't look like he's ready to quit. He definitely called out uh, uh, Yuri Prohashka, who's on the scene and who looks like he's ready to be next in line. He uh, Prohashka, you know, as we all know, made quick work of uh, uh, in dominating fashion of uh, Dominic Reyes, and he looks to be a force to be reckoned with in the 205 division. So uh, they said maybe May they want to make that fight. So, you know, if Glover can successfully defend that title, which will be a tall order against a young, uh, hard-hitting uh, up-and-comer like Yuri Prohash, excuse me, Prohashka, does he if win, lose, or draw? Well, I don't think there'll be a draw, but win or lose, should Glover hang it up after that next fight? Of course, I'm sure he'd love to successfully defend the title after he's won it, but it doesn't uh, look like there's a lot of other lucrative matches out there at 205 for him. Should he win against Prohoshka, maybe he can give uh, Blahovich a rematch should he work his way back to it. But either way, kudos to Glover Teixeira. He did a great job. And like he said, when asked uh, how he did it, he said, this is my house, meaning inside the octagon. He's worked damn near 20 plus years toward that goal of becoming a champion. And like he said, this is my house. And, um, you know, he deserves to kick his feet up and relax for a minute and bask in the glory of winning UFC gold. And, um, you know, like I said, early summer, maybe we'll get that uh, title defense and maybe he can win and ride off into the sunset as a champion or, you know, just give us another great show. But either way, I'm no expert. I just call it how I see it. You tell me what you think down in the comments. And until uh, next time, you win it.